Welcome to St. Lawrence Newland Church on this non-raining day at the present time. Um, the service, the online service today is as follows. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice and, and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach, teach us, us to pray. pray. Lift, Lift up our hearts to worship you in, in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> and the hymn is, The Kingdom Come, O God. The collect for today. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do through Jesus Christ our Lord. The confession saying sorry to God. It is then all too tragic how poorly we reflect your love. How often we shrink from the inheritance of being your children and how readily we shirk the responsibility to love as we have been loved. There can be no excuse for our faults. There can be no justification for the ways we inhibit the fruitful living of others, or for the damage we do to this world and to ourselves. We confess that we have sinned. We have no hope but your forgiveness. And so we ask it in hope and in trust that your love, your perfect love, made human in Jesus Christ, who walked among us and knows every hair on our heads and every movement of our lives, speaks quietly to our troubled souls. I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. And so rejoicing in the life of Christ and in the joy of the Holy Spirit, we ask you, restore us anew and shape us in your ways. Amen. May Almighty God forgive us our sins, cleanse us by his Holy Spirit, and bring us to new life in Christ. Amen. We sing our next hymn, There Once Was a Man Who Walked With God.
The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Spiritual Blessings in Christ Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in our union with Christ he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Even before the world was made, God had already chosen us to be his through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. This was his pleasure and his purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. For by the blood of Christ we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such large measure. In all his wisdom and insight, God did what he had purposed and made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by means of Christ. 
This plan, which God will complete when the time is right, is to bring all creation together, everything in heaven and on earth, with Christ as head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose, based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Let us then, who were the first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And you also became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought your salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is the guarantee that we shall receive what God has promised his people, and this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are his. Let us praise his glory. This is the word of the Lord. A sermon for this Sunday, Sea Sunday, the 11th of July, 2021. Churches across the globe uh, come together on this day um, to celebrate the role that seafarers play in our daily lives. To thank and pray for them for the hardships they face and the sacrifices they have been forced to endure um, due to the COVID lockdowns. We'll begin by saying a prayer for them and all who work at sea. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for seafarers and all who work at sea. We give thanks for their great contribution um, to our economy um, to our defence and to our world. We pray for them and their families um, as they often spend long time at sea. We ask your blessing upon them um, during times of um, difficult weather that they endure and we ask your blessing upon their work um, for the glory of your name. Amen. From London to Lagos, to Lagos to Manila, to Manila to Melbourne, our community gathers together to give something back to these essential workers who work at sea, who spend months away from their families in often difficult conditions to keep our global economy afloat. Today's reading I'm going to speak on is Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where Paul writes about the Pacific spiritual blessings that we gain whilst we're in Christ. Paul uses this term in Christ in a number of his letters and so if you're unaware of what Paul means by being in Christ um, he gives his definition here in the first chapter of the first letter to the Ephesians um, with six specific spiritual blessings that we receive once we're in Christ. And these six spiritual blessings enable us to have great peace and comfort, knowing that we have a safe haven of where we're going to end up at the end of our lives uh, with God. And of course, God is with us throughout our life as we travel with him to ultimately be with him at the end. And these are two common themes for those who work at sea. They have an ultimate destination um, to get to, a safe haven for them and their cargo. 
And the other important aspect is companionship. Some cargo ships are very few in crew number and so they often spend great times alone. And so our reading today gives us great heart that wherever we are in the world, whether we're far at sea or even in our own homes, we have God the Father in our lives his presence that we know as a guarantee that we will ultimately end up with him through the gift of the Holy Spirit, which Paul writes about at the end of this letter. But often we hear different voices in the world, and I'm sure those voices can often be magnified whilst at sea, and especially when you're alone. We can hear voices of our unworthiness. We can hear voices that there is no hope beyond our life. We can hear voices that we are alone or that we're disliked. And Paul puts to bed all of these voices by reminding us that we are greatly loved by God. God has foreplanned for us to be with him in our lives and at the end of our lives. And that he's given us an inheritance to all who believe in him and his son. Paul writes that we are adopted as his children and thereby we will inherit all that Jesus has, which Paul writes at the beginning because he is Lord, he is Lord over everything. So we are inheritors, inheritors of everything that Christ rules over. And as adopted as children, we receive redemption, forgiveness and grace. This unmerited favour in our lives that God gives to us as his adopted children. And as part of our ultimate inheritance, he gives us this sixth final blessing, which is the mystery of his will. That ultimately all will be drawn to him and all will be redeemed to him through his son, Jesus Christ. So we give thanks to Paul and for the seafarers for the great endurance that they endured and endure in their ministries. And we thank Paul for reminding us today that in Christ we are blessed with six wonderful blessings from God in Christ. That we are adopted as God's children. That we receive his redemption, forgiveness and grace in our lives. That we know the knowledge of the mystery of the will of God in the future and that by receiving the Holy Spirit, we are guaranteed to inherit this as his children. So whatever voices you hear, whether at sea or on land, know that God ultimately wishes to bless us in our lives. May God bless you and all who work at sea with these spiritual blessings in your lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Intercessions for the Sixth Sunday after Trinity, Year B, the 11th of July, 2021. Everlasting God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers which we offer in his name. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, working among us, that we may tell the word of truth and live the gospel of salvation as a living example for all mankind. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we pray for your church, for Archbishops Justin and Stephen, and our bishops Gooley and John. We pray that they will be strengthened and protected by the Holy Spirit in all they do and say. We pray for the work of the General Synod of the Church of England, having a physical meeting in a church house, Westminster, this weekend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for the leaders of the world, carrying responsibilities for the lives of their people especially the royal family. We pray for all still affected by coronavirus and for a new determination to end the pandemic, which brings with it so much fear, heartache and suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for the people of our area especially those who feel excluded, exploited or ignored, and for all who are still unable to resume normal level of employment because of the pandemic effect on the area. Help us, your people, to work together to build a community which is as open and generous as your love shown to us in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the schools that are coming to the end of the summer term. We pray that the children and staff of St. Seth's and St. Nicholas schools and all the high schools have an enjoyable holiday and return safely in September. We pray for the European Cup final on Sunday, that everyone enjoys the experience and the best team wins with dignity and kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, we pray for healing in body, mind and spirit for all those who are in need. We pray that in lives darkened by any kind of pain, distress or grief, the light of Christ will bring comfort, hope and sense for all your encompassing love. Our prayers are with Keith Marshall, Malcolm Bandock, Patricia Foreman, Tom York, Jerry Lucy, Sadie Russell, Elliot, Sue Wilson, Sarah Maher, Tony Grinstead, Anne Cal, Joss Pittman, and all those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love, and with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently died and lose bereaved by their passing. We pray for the family and friends of John Collingwood Collins, especially his widow Edith, daughter Diane and son Richard. Also, Peggy Barthood, Wynne's sister. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for the opportunity of being together in prayer as we look forward to the week to come. We pray for an awareness of your love and support in all we do. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Jesus Christ. We will now sing, say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy come will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today we give thanks for all seafarers and those who work at sea. For those who work at our ports across the world and play a vital contribution to the way in which our world works. We give thanks for them and their family and friends and we ask for God's blessing upon them in their lives and in their work. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean. Oh
in love. 